the smoke is visible for miles. Coming from the Drake Hotel in downtown Minneapolis, a four alarm fire. It's crazy. I have to deal with this on Christmas Day and just hope everyone's okay. Everything's gone. Natalie Olson escaped. It's just an old building. But is now thinking of everything left inside. Thinking about the new PS4 station my son got and the TV that's all in there. And the fire started just around three Christmas morning. When crews arrived, they found flames on the second floor, which eventually spread to the attic. Crews spent hours battling the fire. We're gonna be here all day. It, this is gonna be a long effort. Firefighters say three people were taken to the hospital, dozens of people now without a home, placed in these buses to keep warm. No way around it, this is tragic. These are people's lives. This is their home. They're concerned about everything from a wallet or a phone so that they can get in touch with a loved one on Christmas uh, to where their baby is going to get formula. Mayor Jacob Fry is now hoping people step up to help. This is such a loss. Help people like Natalie, now left with nothing. So I'm calling on our whole city. I'm calling on our state to help those out in this building. We're now in these buses behind me. In Minneapolis. A loss for a lot of people. Alex Hagan. Care 11 News. Nine days after the storm, the sounds of cleanup continue to echo throughout this Luck, Wisconsin neighborhood. A lot of cleanup every night. April Livingston is happy to finally have help there we go. in her backyard. I was not expecting all of the people, all the help. Help from several strangers. Yes. Exercise by helping somebody. <laughs> giving up part of their weekend to clear this mess. I decided to come out and help. Krista Dawson is one of the dozens of volunteers who answered the Polk County Sheriff's Office call for 200 this weekend. Krista did not even think twice that she would have kept going tomorrow. Unfortunately, I have a 40 hour job, so I can't. <laughs> but if there's something going on next weekend, definitely. At Unity High School in Balsam Lake. 119 have been completed to some degree as of right now. Ben Garrett with the Wisconsin DNR looks over how many cleanup jobs volunteers have completed. It's been growing gradually this morning. Unfortunately, only about 90 volunteers total came forward this weekend. But crews were still able to get about 70% of those jobs done. It's been nice to drive around and see neighborhoods pulling together and cleaning up this debris and working together. Working together to help get this community through this difficult time. Definitely would not have been able to do this without their help. For months, we waited, waited for scenes like this. You guys know what you want to drink? A new normal we thought would never come. Wine, 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 you're bobbing. Wine, 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 you're bobbing. Pull, pull, tap. Tap, tap. But inside this Boynton Beach home, past the time of day, the waiting, a lot of waiting, continues. Of hoping and hoping. Joyce Fish yeah. finds herself still waiting in her home. Yeah, pretty much. For her new normal to begin. <sighs> this is my, I say it's my office. I usually have paperwork or stuff that I have to do here. Since March 2020, 83 year old Joyce. It's my go to when there's nothing else on. Has been sitting on this couch. We watch quite a few. Trying to find ways to pass the time with her husband, Jack, of 62 years. It's a psychological one. I don't know if I'm going to love it. So we would sit and watch TV. Diagnosed with cancer right when the country shut down due to COVID. If I don't like it, I shut it off. Joyce has been stuck here for a long, long time. My normal is not really what everybody else's normal is at this time. When you have a compromised immune situation, you can't just go about and do what everybody else is doing. Barely able to see her kids unable to see her grandkids. This was the cruise picture, and this is the laughs are greater when we're together or whatever. So there we were together, and, and dad and the baby, and mom and the baby. And hardest of all, they're all adorable. Missing out on the birth of her great-granddaughter Dylan a year ago, a moment she can never recover. Right, you can't hug and you can't kiss and you can't do the things that are natural. I'm alone, I feel I'm alone. Alone. Just have to be patient. Wine, 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 you're bobbing? Luckily. Wine, 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 you're bobbing. Wine, 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 you're bobbing. Pull, pull, tap, tap, tap. Joyce did get to see Dylan from her couch. Oh, pretty. Several times a week. You want to do creep them? Creep them, creep them, creep. To make the waiting maybe 
just a little bit easier. She smiles and she laughs. FaceTime's over. Where's Mimi? I see you. And over. Pretty soon she's going to take a step. And over again. The wheels on the bus go round and round. For the round last and year. Round, round and round. I told my granddaughter every day I want my smile of the day. So I have at least 365 pictures that, I, that made me smile. So those little things are what help you get through the rough times. Who knows how many people share Joyce's rough times through COVID, a part of our lives that stole so many moments. Okay, bye, Dylan. All Joyce could bye, do sweetie. was wait and hope. Bye-bye. To eventually create bye. new moments. And I'm hoping that my condition will improve enough so that I can feel more normalcy in my activities. And hope did come for Joyce in the form of a vaccine. I'll do anything I can to be with the family, to see that cute little baby and kiss those little chubby cheeks. <laughs> I can't wait to get up there. Right, that's true. Two shots and a plane ride to New York on a Friday in June. Joyce held her great-granddaughter for the first time. Oh, oh, my little girl, you see? Joyce waited one whole year for this. I feel very blessed and lucky that I have been able to do this. Everything she missed, Joyce took back in this exact moment. You can't have a feeling, even though social media is wonderful, you can't have that special feeling unless you're touching someone and holding someone and being with them and seeing reactions and interactions. And I think that's what it's all about. It certainly feels a lot better than it has been feeling in a long time. She made it through the rough times and finds herself finally in her new normal. I did. I did. And I'm grateful for that. I really am. Alex Hagan, WPTV, News Channel 5. Inside and outside this Medina home, there are glass sculptures. Put them together. Everywhere. Three-dimensional mixed-media glass artists. That is Allison Lutke's passion. And lately she's found a new mission during this pandemic. Right. For hours every day. Eight, for sure. Allison is cutting up glass in her basement. I am in my happy place right now. Shaping them into hearts. World of heart movement sprung up in her barn. Where I do all my cold work and dirty work. And this is a really fun part for me. She puts them in her kiln and builds limestone blocks to complete her creations. I enclose a card explaining what this is. What this is, is a special thank you people can send to healthcare workers they know. This has affected everybody. Everyone knows someone who's in the healthcare industry, neighbor, friend, um, family. She says people from across the country have already asked her to make them a special personalized thank you heart. People to give them as a gift and then to give the gift that keeps giving, which is the donation piece. All the money she receives then goes to the American Nurses Foundation. Why Allison decided to put all her focus into this, she thinks about something her dad said to her. The joy in living isn't giving, my dad would always say. A good message during these trying times. A million people want a heart. I will make a million of these for sure. In Medina. As long as there's a need, I'll keep doing it. Alex Hagan, Care 11 News. I'm making a gold check. Eight-year-old Serenity Boyk raised nearly $500 the past few days. 470 Sunday? She made a new goal. 1,000. She's pretty excited. Mom Cassie made cookies and lemonade. Almost all the little bands by making a lot of bracelets. Serenity made the bracelet to sell in their driveway. I just want to raise money for my friends. By friends, she means her neighbors. A mom who lost two of her kids in an April fire that police believe was set by their father. Two other children survived. Mm -hmm. Serenity just wanted to help in some way. It doesn't surprise me that she wanted to do this because she's just got, like I said, the heart of gold, the size of Texas. And it just makes me pretty proud that she's just so selfless and just all she wants to do is help people. And apparently word quickly spreads. I saw your thing on Facebook. As neighbor after neighbor. To dinner? Mm -hmm. Stop by Sunday. This is what the little girl is getting. <laughs> We're going to take some lemonade and some cookies for the two of us. Big Lake police and fire included. Yeah, you can have a bracelet. 20, 40, 60, 80, 100. Thank you. I'll help her get to her goal. Safe to say, Serenity reached her goal of 1,000. I think I'm going to make my new goal like 2,000. In Big Lake. Or maybe 5,000. This is just her human nature. Alex Hagan, CARE 11 News.
another sunrise in sunny South Florida. That special moment is really, really nice and common for me. I enjoy it. Richard Reyes takes in. Right now you see the sun rays. Every morning. That This is my coffee right here. <laughs> right before. Get the bag. He checks his tools, supplies. These gloves and the latex gloves. And his route for the day. The Woolbright, we're doing the shopping center where Publix is. Yes, it's going to be a very good day. I hope to get lots of litter. Keep the place clean. We're on Federal Highway in Boynton Beach, heading north with the litter hikers of America. When I walk, I do the median and the crew does the sides. Richard and his friends. I mean, it's fun. Susie. We want to be an example to others. And Sean. They have quite a few fans. We love them. The three of them search the streets, sidewalks, and parking lots. Yes, indeed. I have a face mask. Face masks, gloves, latex gloves, bottles, plastic, cans. That's one of the other hazards we deal with, the smell. Yeah, hit the jackpot. There's a lot of gloves, books. There are bad surprises. Well, I'm surprised to find these. And sometimes good. I'm shocked, Sue. Look at this. It's clean. No matter the weather, Richard's out there. Six times a week, yeah, sometimes seven. He's been picking up trash since his days on the west coast of Florida, back when life yes. threw him a curveball. Definitely. Aortic valve replacement and aneurysm repaired. Following his recovery, he started walking and gathering trash. I can't go long stretches like I used to. So walking is still very healthy for me. That's another big reason why I do it. I came out here and I wanted to continue the effort when I came out to Boynton Beach. I hook it through. At the end of every cleanup. I try and do two at a time. 13 pounds of litter. He weighs his garbage and collects data too. Paperweight was three and the nine was the plastic recycles. Okay, 43,200 pounds of litter for the year. Proof that Richard has a long journey ahead of him. He's go out and pick it up again, you know, make it clean again. But he knows each step along South Florida's streets well, inches close. him closer to his goal of a clean, litter-free environment. Call it a sport, if you will, you know. In Boynton Beach, on, Alex Hagan, WPTV, News Channel 5. Thanksgiving time I'm game. at South High School. I hate turkey though. Do you guys like turkey? In room 134. I, I'd rather have a ham. I'd rather we're gonna have some bubble. You won't find too many worksheets, tests, or textbooks. I like that idea. Vince Patton. Yeah, yeah. Right. Is the all nation social studies teacher who brings a more hands-on approach. Because you're still here. I want to really focus on bringing history alive. And for his Native American students, bringing history alive yes. sometimes means taking the lessons well beyond the classroom. Those things are what really give students an opportunity to grow, flourish, and find a connection to their own self. That brings us to the Pine Ridge Reservation in South Dakota. This here is a different kind of classroom. Home to Vince's ancestors, home of the Oglala Sioux tribe. Men, women, and children were camped here. In the home of Vince's next lesson for five of his Native American students. It's our culture, it's us. Seniors Kaina, Joe, Devon, Dacey, and Clifton. It's crazy. It's always been a good time. Joined Vince and his family to learn of a sacred Native American tradition, the buffalo hunt. Because it was like our modern day Walmart. We could get everything from our housing, our clothes, our food, our art supplies, our tools from this one animal all right there. It was near Allen they found a herd. 14 of them just down below the draw. See if we don't scare them away. <laughs> Vince's father, Chuck, is the marksman as the students look on. Same spot. And with one shot, <laughs> he's able to bring it down. Opila Tatanka. He's done. We got it. Oh! Each one of them thanks the animal. Thank you my good friend for its life and we'll have to feed a lot of kids with this so like this is like taking it back hopefully it will make a difference in their life the buffalo is moved we're gonna get them set we got the other one here down too and cut into pieces and just like that it provides food but more importantly it provides an important lesson in culture and tradition for these five students we were there in the moment on the hill the buffalo will lead to a stronger better healthier life for our kids it was the celebration of enjoyment uh, we don't usually come out here to do all this uh, traditional stuff. It's this kind of hands-on experience Vince wants for his students. Take your gloves off. You don't have to. 
a lesson that cannot be taught to make things better in a classroom right because as seniors right you are a group of our best seniors that we have a lesson he hopes connects his students to who they are for the rest of their lives See, it's, i wish this could be our education in pine ridge south dakota i really love you guys and i really hope that this experience changes your life alex hagan carol evan news